Are you ready to stop the self-sabotage and create the life you desire? Well, in order for that to happen, you need to break free from the bad beliefs that are holding your success hostage. You need to optimize the stress by turning it into extra energy for success. And those hurtful habits? Well, we need to give that pain a purpose for progress. Welcome to Stop the Self-Sabotage and Create the Life You Desire podcast. Finish the sentence for me. Dysfunctional givers attract fill in the blank. And if you came up with dysfunctional takers, you are correct. Now, in just a moment, I'm going to share a story with you that came from one of my clients, but we've all lived it, where one thing went wrong in the day, and then it just seemed to absolutely snowball and avalanche from there. But while I'm sharing it, I want you to keep this in mind, that when someone is feeling disordered, dysregulated, dysfunctional, and they have other people in their environment, well, there's only one of three things that can happen. Either the person that's having the challenge can co-regulate and step up into somebody else's healthy environment where they're stable, regulated, and intelligent, or the person who's having a challenge can try to bring the other person who's healthy down into that lower level, or they have to part ways. You cannot keep someone uh, who is dysfunctional and someone who's intelligent in the same space and place. The, one of them's going to have to leave. Dysregulated and regulated are going to irritate each other. And disordered and stable, uh, they're, they're not even going to want to look at each other. Okay. So just keep that in mind as I talk about how days can snowball. So my client uh, was telling me about one of her toxic triggers. Right now, my clients are going through a program called VISTA, uh, Vision, Inspiration, Strategies, Tactics, and Achievement Through Accountability. One of the exercises is looking at toxic triggers and preloading behaviors. I'm going to explain that in just a moment. So what happened was she took her kids to school. The line was longer than usual, and now she is going to be late for a very significant meeting. Okay, so she gets there, and um, and keep in mind, things were out of order, disorder. That's the first thing where we can begin to spiral down. Now she's feeling dysregulated, and and so her system is off. She's needing to do something to soothe it. So there are two meetings back-to-back. She's late for the first one that she had to be at. The second one, she didn't need to be there, but she decides to step into overperformance. We're talking about toxic triggers here. She decides to step into overperformance and hang out at the second one. Well, her hanging out at the second one causes her to miss another meeting that she had completely forgotten about because she couldn't access the areas of her brain that held intelligence uh, when she went disordered. We go into survival thinking then, unless we stabilize ourselves. And she completely forgot about this other meeting, and she misses it, and the day just gets worse from there. We've all done it, right? One of my mentors told me, Dawn, your ability not just to achieve success, but to keep success is going to be dependent upon how stable you can stay whenever everything is telling you to dysregulate and go dysfunctional. Now, I've talked about before different techniques because to stabilize yourselves, you have to do what's known as bottom up. It's the breathing. It's movement to shake off some of the stress that you've been experiencing. It's making sure that you're drinking water to hydrate your brain because the outer level is the first thing that's going to dehydrate, and that's where we keep our intelligence. Okay. So what is it that you can do that when you begin to notice things are 
getting disordered and you want to stop it from going any further. Or maybe they are dysregulated and, and you're like, okay, what is it that I can do to gain my footing? Or you've gone dysfunctional because when you go dysfunctional, you take it personal. And that is when you have a tendency to overperform. And that's when you give too much. And when you give too much, the people in your environment that are healthy can say, hey, come on up and co-regulate in my area. But because of your programming and conditioning, you won't be able to recognize it. And now you are open to manipulation. Somebody coming along and using the fact that you want to overgive and you want to o- overperform, that they're, they're going to use that for their benefit at your expense. Okay, so what is it that we need to do to prepare for that? Uh, we want to look at what's known as preloading behaviors. Again, I'm just giving you a little bit of insight in the program that I've got going on right now. If you want to get more information on Vista to where it's completely customized to you and your toxic triggers and preloading behaviors, uh, go to dawnlandrum.com, click on the Vista tab, and you will see what's offered there. I only offer it this time of year. Okay. So the first thing that you want to do on toxic triggers is you want to say, okay, where am I attracted to overperforming? Where am I attracted to giving too much? What, what's going to be the preloading behavior? And preloading behavior are simply the events that lead up to you giving too much. I got a puppy I, I've shared with you. Uh, he is six months. He's a large breed. He's what's called a St. Dane. He's a cross between a St. Bernard and a Great Dane. And at six months old, his paws are as big as my hand. He can dig holes really fast in my backyard. If you think about St. Bernard's, well, that's what they're built to be triggered to do, dig through the ice and snow to save people. Well, he decided he's going to dig to China in my backyard. But I've noticed when he's going to start digging, when he is preloading the behavior, when he begins to wander around aimlessly, and then all of a sudden he's going to go toxic. The idea is to catch him right before he starts digging because I've paid attention to him preloading that behavior. So just like with my client, I'm like, okay, what is, causes you to overgive, to overperform? And she's like, when my schedule's too tight. All right, what do we need to do with that? Because you will be attracted. You will be attracted to overperform, to overgive, or you will be attracted to being able to stabilize yourself in those experiences. So it's like, okay, she knows that she needs to add on a little bit of time in certain areas. I'm like, but what are you going to do? What are you going to do if you don't have the time? And she's like, well, wow, I want to pat myself on the back. Cause when I realized I was going to be late to the meeting, I was actually able to keep myself stable and reach out to someone who was going to be there and say, could you fill in for me for the first few minutes? Excellent. Yes. Like, but then you still had a tendency towards the end of the meeting to feel shame, not guilt. Now, what's the difference between shame and guilt? Guilt says we have violated one of our values. Shame says we're broken and we're flawed cannot be fixed. I said, so did you stay at the second meeting? Not because you were going to be a benefit to anybody or you're going to receive any benefit because that would have been guilt. What, what can I do to make amends? What can I do to repair? No, you're just going to be sitting there. So were you giving out of guilt or were you giving out of shame? Giving out of shame. And that's dysfunctional where you're giving from 
your wounded place. You're never going to get healthy. Carl Jung said it best to paraphrase. When we study sick people, we only learn how to treat disease. The only way we can be healthy is when we study healthy people. So you want to give from the healthy part of you, not the part that's wounded. So I said, when you want to overperform and overgive, what are you going to need to do? And she's like, I need to be looking at where I need to go and give my brilliance and magnificence where it would have been beneficial. She said, if I would have done that, I would have looked at my calendar and realized that's where I was supposed to be at another meeting where I was actually going to be delivering brilliance. Okay. So you want to look at your toxic triggers and say, what are the behaviors that lead up to me going toxic? And decide what you can do to try to deflect from those. But if you cannot, you're in a situation and you're like, I don't want my entire day to get worse from here. I actually want it to be wonderful. Then you're going to need to decide, well, what can I do to be stable, regulated, and intelligent? Where can I go to give my brilliance? Where can I go to co-regulate with other healthy people? Or you can choose to overperform and overgive, but it's simply going to lead to destruction. And the longer it goes on, the more that's going to be tear- torn down. So stop the self-sabotage. Re- realize you have um, preloading behaviors that can be interrupted. It's known as a pattern interrupt. But if it's too late, you're already in it, then decide how you're going to design the rest of your day from there by looking at the environment you can put yourself in that's going to bring out your intelligence as quick as possible. So until we get together again, blessings on your brilliance, Because I don't know if you've noticed it or not, but the world's a pretty dark place. It needs your light more than ever before. So get out there and shine.